How's it everyone? Hope you are enjoying your personal devotional time and that you're enjoying your groups and that you're having good times to share together. Did you know that God promises some amazing things about your financial health? Um, And He clearly indicates in His Word (coughs) what you should do to be financially blessed. And um, in his word, he makes it clear that he wants you to be blessed. In fact, Jesus had more to say about money than any other thing, <coughs> that he, any other topic that he spoke about. So the Bible speaks about seven important habits that I want to highlight tonight um, so that you can think about them and maybe implement them in your own lives. Excuse me. <coughs> the first habit is this. I must trust God as my source and my supplier. Some people think because they have a good job and because they are bright in the eyes of some people that they are the guys who make the money, the boodle, the whatever. But here's a question. I mean, who gave you the intellect? I mean, to open it, if you open a tap and the water comes out, the tap supplies the water, but it's not necessarily the source of the water. The reservoir, the dam further down the line is the source. So, ever ask the question, why are you brighter than other people? Or why do you have a better job than someone else? Well, the answer is simple. It comes from God. Romans 11 verse 36 says this, For from Him and through Him and for Him are all things. To Him be the glory forever. Amen. God gives abilities, opportunities, and He is the source. Deuteronomy 8 verse 18 has this to say, <clears throat> But remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth, and so confirms His covenant which He swore to your ancestors as it is today. <laughs> Let me read it again. He is the one, remember the Lord your God, for He is the one who gives you the ability to produce wealth. In other words, Um, God gives you the abilities, but God also wants you to produce wealth. Um, And this is more than just accumulating. God wants you to be wealthy because then the people around you are blessed. So think about that one. So first, first thing is trust God as your source and your supplier. The second one is you must keep good records. (coughs) This is good management. Um, It's either worry about your finances or manage it so that you know exactly where you are. Proverbs 27, 23 says this, Know well the condition of your flocks and pay attention to your herds. For riches are not forever, nor does a crown endure to all generations. So know where you are. Know, think about how you will manage it. Flocks and herds in those days were people's way of being wealthy. Um, they would say that guy has a thousand sheep or a f- thousand goats or a thousand herd of cattle and that one has two thousand, therefore that one was more wealthy than this one. <coughs> now here's the thing. If you do not know where your money is going, you already have trouble. So best way to accumulate wealth is to keep good records. How much do I owe? How much do I need to pay? Um, How much money do I get in? How much money do I have to spend? All of those things are very important. So, you need to trust God as your source and supplier, and then you need to keep good records. The third thing is, I must give God the first 10% that He has given to me. I must give back to God the first 10%. Um, This is, of course, if I want God to bless me financially. Um... And why? I mean, is God poor? Does God not have any money? No. I mean, everything belongs to God anyway. The reason for us giving back the 10% is because it teaches us to put God first in our lives. He must come first. In my marriage, He must come first in my work. And yes, God must come first in my finances. God speaks and through the writings of Moses in the book of Deuteronomy to the nation of Israel, chapter 14, and he says this, Bring this tithe to the designated place of worship, the place the Lord your God chooses for His name to be on it, and eat it there in His presence. This applies to your tithes of grain, new wine, olive oil, and the firstborn male of your flocks. 
Doing this will teach you always to fear the Lord your God. Tithing helps us to put God's first. Tithing helps us to put God in His place, to fear God. That's not about getting God richer or, or to make a church look good. Um, I mean, and <clears throat> just a point here, some people think that by making some contribution to some kind of charity that that is part of their tithe. In, the pl- in this particular passage, um, God clearly says, bring this tithe to the, to the designated place of worship. Where do you tithe? Well, you're a tithe where you worship. Um, okay, Proverbs 3 verse 9 and to 10 says this, Honor the Lord from your wealth and from the first of all you produce, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. God wants your finances to be transformed. Um, so so in, in, in the process of transforming, God says the first principle is to give back to me. I need to be first. And if you do this, if you tithe, then I will bless you in all the other ways. That's not something that I'm saying. That's not something I'm saying so that we could be rich at Eastside. I'm saying that because that is a principle. God comes first. That's a principle that God instituted, not me. If you honor God, He will fill your bonds. Fourth thing, <clears throat> if you want to be blessed financially, you must learn to save and invest for the future. Proverbs 21 1 verse 20 has this to say. The wise store up choice food and olive oil, but a fool gulps theirs down. In other words, some people who are wise put some stuff away for tomorrow and the day afterwards. Others have it all now, and then tomorrow they have nothing. The context, of course, here is people saving some seed for the next season. Years ago, when I went to visit in Malawi, um, the Malawian people would have two places where they stored their food. There was one place that was kept separate. And I asked the guys, what, what is that for? And they said, no, that's the seed for n- next season. We can't touch that. The seed on this side we can touch, but not that side. And they would do everything within their power to protect that seed from rodents and all kinds of other things that might come in to eat it. Um, saving and investing is a mark of wisdom, even if you are just saving a little bit, a little bit every month. Um, Listen to what Proverbs 13 verse 11 says. Um, <clears throat> Dishonest money dwindles away, but whoever gathers money little by little makes it grow. Whether it's 10 rand or 20 rand or 50 rand or 100 rand a month. But whoever gathers money little by little makes it grow. It is not how much you, you are saving, but how consistently you are saving that will determine the outcome. When you get a little extra, put it away instead of spending it all. Um, So, the fifth point. I must set up a repayment plan to get rid of all my debt. So I need to save and I must set up a repayment plan to get rid of all my debt. Now, I think in today's day and age, it's difficult to avoid debt. Now, there's a difference between good debt and I would say good debt would be like money that you spend spend on an investment like a property and um, bad debt is debt like credit card and other debt but all of us at some stage will find ourselves at the short end of debt it is not having the debt that's the problem it is the intentionality of getting out of the debt that's the problem because some people have debt and then they make debt to service the debt listen to what it says in Romans 13 verse 8 Let no debt remain outstanding except continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. Let no debt remain outstanding. Why? I think there are some simple reasons for that. Your debt is keeping you from doing what God wants you to do. How many times have I heard in my ministry, I can't do this or I can't do that because I have to pay all of this debt. The debt in that person's life, or in that couple's life, has paralyzed them. They can't pay money towards going on a marriage enrichment course, for example. They can't invest in their marriage because they owe too much money on the other side. Um, so, <clears throat> what is um, this outstanding debt 
that Paul refers to when he speaks to the Romans? Well, the outstanding debt is all of the debt. It's not just like a minimum payment. For example, your credit card where once a month they send you a little thing. You owe 10,000 Rand. Minimum payment is 903 Rand and 13 cents. I mean, all of the debt. And um, we, we must get into the habit of, of killing the debt that we have as soon as possible. Um, so, if you cannot, um, some people say they can't tithe and they can't bless other people because they don't have. Um, and here's the simple thing if you cannot tithe and save, you are living beyond your means. And you need to plan yourself out of this. So, you have to have a plan, a repayment plan, to get rid of all your debt without making more debt. The sixth, the sixth very important thing is I must budget my spending. Budget is telling you where you want your money to go. You don't budget after the fact, you budget before the fact. Proverbs 21.5 puts it like this. The plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. The plan is to budget. If you act quickly, you will never have enough. Some people um, have a budget, but then they see a sale somewhere and they're going to buy something. And then the budget doesn't work for them. And Proverbs 21 verse 20 says this, The wise have wealth and luxury, but fools spend whatever they can. The wise have luxury and wealth, but fools spend what, whatever they can. So think about that a little bit. So how much do I get in? How, how much am I going to pay where? Um, and budget needs to include everything. It needs to include, include groceries, it needs to include education, your education or your child's education, and the list goes on. Point number seven. I must enjoy what I have. <laughs> I think this is where it goes wrong with for, for most people. And um, we buy something and within a short space of time we get bored with that or we keep on thinking about the next thing or the next better car or so on. Paul writes to Timothy in 1 Timothy 6.6, 6, he says, Godliness with contentment is great gain. Enjoy what you have instead of running after what you don't have. Basically, Paul was saying, Godliness with contentment. Solomon writes in Ecclesiastes 6.9, he says, Enjoy what you have rather than desiring what you don't have. Enjoy what you have rather than desiring what you don't have. Just dreaming about nice things is meaningless, like chasing the wind. Until you are satisfied, you will not tithe. Until you are satisfied, you will not save because you're always worrying about the next thing that you, will, you, you need. Hebrews 13.5 says this, Don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. I mean, be satisfied with what you have. Why? Because God will make sure that you have to have what you need tomorrow. Okay, so in summary, you have no idea how much God wants to bless you. The Bible is full of God's intent towards us, and, and He means this in a financial way as well. If only you will handle your finances in His way. So there's Seven things that you must remember. Trust God as your source. You, you need to make tithing a habit. You need to save. You need to repay your debt as soon as you can. You need to budget. Enjoy what you have. Matthew 6.31 puts it like this. So don't worry about these things saying, What will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thought of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and He will give you everything that you need. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you that your intent for us is to bless us. And Lord, financially, um, many of us are challenged because we've made some bad choices or because of circumstances of life. Help us to get to grips with how you want to bless us. And will you bless us, Lord, so that we can be a blessing? But the one thing I do pray, Lord, is that you would release us from the desire 
of always having more. Help us to find joy in what you're supplying us with at this point in time. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.